Hey, what's going on? Luke here, and we are back for episode four of the Aston Villa career mode on EAFC. Now, the previous episode was a live comment. Hopefully, you did enjoy that one. Now, this video isn't going to be like that because we're going to be covering 10 games. We're going to be going basically up until the January transfer window, a couple of games before that one. But we are going to be playing 10 games in this episode, and you're going to see the progression from me sort of struggling at the start of the season in the previous episode, sort of coming good, and you're going to see how things are going uh, with the squad that we've got. Because we have a very, very good squad, just a matter of putting it all together on EAFC. See, and that's what I think we're going to be doing in this episode. Now, we've got the injury out of the way. We're not going to waste any more time. Let's go ahead and take a look at these games. So, we've got 10 to cover. So, like I said, we have 10 games to cover. So, we have quite a lot of games. We've got some, some games against teams like Nottingham Forest. We've got games in the Premier League, games in the Conference League. We've got big games against teams like Man City, all that sort of stuff. But we start off very, very strong. We're playing full games, also playing some highlighted games as well. But uh, this is one that we definitely played, the full game. You can see their defense is getting a lot better. We've already got a one. 1-0 lead. It was from a little bit of a free kick, and that's something that I have sort of expressed in previous episodes, that the uh, the headers are very overpowered, whether it's from a, a corner or what I'm experiencing here is that it's uh, it's very overpowered even on free kicks, but Malin scores a nice little goal there as well, so the counter-attack is still as strong as ever, but speaking of counter-attacks, Nottingham Forest from the counter-attack, and they end up scoring a goal there, 85th minute can we hold on? That's all we need to know is can we hold on? And they are looking to counter-attack here, but it is Consa, and we were fielding a little bit of like a rotated squad. Uh, not like a full rotated squad, but we're, we weren't fielding our strongest squad is essentially what I'm trying to say. But Matty Cash there goes and secures the three points as we end up winning 3-1, 91st minute. Nicely goal there, Matty Cash. You love to see it, but Carlos, Malin, and Cash getting the goals for us. They got like a little bit of a consolation in the end, um, but there was a few little shaky moments. So that's the first one down, nine to go, and we move on to the Conference League, and we take on Botto Sunny. I don't even know how to say that, but, but this is one, and you'll probably find with a lot of these uh, Conference League ones, the games that I use as highlights, like you can play the highlights these days on AFC, and uh, look, things did not start off good. I wasn't, this is the first time I'd ever really tried it. I'd seen people do it in other career modes, and low-key thought he was offside there, but Bodu goes and equalizes in the 26th minute. But um, yeah, I was I was kind of thinking we'd get some more opportunities, but we didn't really have any clear-cut chances, and it ends up one all. So I thought it'd be quite interesting just to show you the table. I mean, with 11 games in, at one point, we were sort of floating around the relegation zone. I knew it was very early on, and I said take it with a grain of salt. And I also take it with a grain of salt there, but we are sort of rising up in the in the Premier League table. And at the start of the season, they did ask us to get top four, uh, which I thought was a little bit... Uh, a little bit questionable considering we're Aston Villa top four. Like, I, I really don't think they're a top four side in terms of, uh, like, expectations. But it is what it is. But we go into this game against Fulham, a team we should be beating. But instead, Fulham opened the scoring there. Nice sort of goal. Kind of against runner play, if I'm being completely honest with you. And you'll find a lot of the time, like, in terms of these games... Um, I'm not going to show all the highlights. I'm purely just showing the uh, the goals. Speaking of goals, Makoko bangs at home. What a pass, I want to say. What a pass, what a run. It just opened up so easily for us there. But I just want to point out that uh, you're not seeing all the highlights, but we've pretty much been dominating these games, been getting the majority of the uh, of the chances. And then Watkins goes and scores a goal there too. Also, I want to point out, I was kind of feeling around with formations as well at this point. So up to one, but I think I changed your 4 one 2 one 2 whereas I've been playing a 4-4-2, been playing a 4-3-3. I was just kind of experimenting at this point. But Diaby, who is easily our best player overall-wise and even just in terms of play style in general, he sort of just goes up the wing. He just messes around with him and ends up with Bodu, who ends up scoring a goal. It's 3-1. And uh, the 85th minute seems to be a common theme for us to concede. So that's what's going to happen right now. It's a definite possibility for them stuffing around with the ball there. The defense have been pretty decent up until this point. But we just find Antonio, I think it was, or Traore, one of the two. I think it's Antonio. Uh, he goes in and just scores a very, very easy goal. So we went from being very, very comfortable to sort of being under the pump, 93rd minute. I'm thinking, oh, hell no. There's no chance. And thankfully, Martinez with a big, big save there in the 90th minute. We end up winning. So a pretty impressive start to the episode. We've had a fair few wins there and some... Wins in like impressive fashion. So our attacking has always been quite good, but it's just a matter of sorting out the defense. But our attack right there, Diego Carlos, 
is a defender. I just want to point that out. But he scores. He scores so often. He scores doubles. Just the corner. It's something I talked about start of the episode when we got that free kick um, goal in a very similar fashion. But uh, we should have been up two 0 and that, that's kind of the reason I showed that highlight. Been mostly just showing the goals for the most part. But uh, you know, speaking of goals, Sessegnon goes through um, just an, an easy finish, and it was sort of coming. But at the same time, like Tottenham were a side that I knew they were good, but I didn't go into this game thinking by any means that we're going to lose this one. We're full of confidence. want a little bit of a winning streak. I thought we're going to absolutely smoke him. Our attack is just way too good. But instead, Richarlison gets it to Johnson, who's sort of holding off. I don't really know a lot about Johnson, if I'm being completely honest with you, but he ends up just fooling us completely. Um, I don't know if it was like a fake shot. I don't know exactly what it was, but he ends up just finding space, and he absolutely dusts it as he goes through. It scores a goal and end up being a winner. So we went from having a six-minute uh, six lead to end up losing 2-1. So it was disappointing as our win streak come to an end, but we are looking to bounce back. So what team to take on uh, when you're looking to bounce back than Bournemouth. Um, they're not like a fantastic side, but I will say doing the highlights, I don't know how smart it is. I feel like if I play the game, I think there's like a 90% chance I win this one, but doing the highlights is a little bit risky, but we do go and score probably one of the only chances of the game. That's one thing I have noticed. That was like a clear cut chance, but there's not too many in terms of highlights, but we do pick up a one new victory hitting back after a tough loss. So we're going from having a first loss in a little while Getting a win against Bournemouth, albeit like one chance, one goal. Uh, but we did go ahead and go do the highlights again. Zeniolo squares it to Watkins. And we're taking on Man City, by the way. So it is a big, big game. I think they, they've lost one game, something along to that. They are well and truly in first position. So the fact that we've got a lead against them. I know it's a home game, but we are on top of them. Zeniolo there as well. Uh, previous episode, they came and said that we need to play him. And, you know, the, the club that he's from isn't too happy with him. But he is someone who's definitely in the news. Um, might be betting on Man City. Uh, they get a penalty. Harlan goes and equalizes. So uh, at this point, I was like, oh, it's not undeserved because we're playing the highlights. But I low-key think if I had played this one, I think we would have absolutely dusted Man City. But uh, yeah, Zeniolo definitely in the news. It is ironic that we're playing him and, you know, some dodgy little calls there. But we... We should really clear it there. We don't. It falls back to, uh, I think it was Alvarez, and he goes and finishes it. Just poor defense from myself, and I suppose that's, I don't want to say it's the beauty. It's probably the opposite. Um, just the downfall of playing the highlights is the chances come, but they come so quick. And just there, I tried to square it, which I did at the start of the video in one of the highlights, and it worked out that time. This time, it didn't. So we end up losing this one 2-1. So a tough loss there to Manchester City. However, it was purely done on highlights. Whereas this one is a game against Arsenal. And we're going to be playing the full game back to normal. I thought this is a game that I need to sort of redeem myself. I mean, we've had a pretty strong start. And then sort of midway through this episode, it's sort of... I don't want to say it's sort of a bit of a downer, but at the same time, we haven't really been smacking teams, and that's what I want to be doing. It's going to be hard against teams like Man City, but we have got a very strong start. We sort of just played it around in the box. We found a little bit of space. And that is something that the computer tends to do, but not something that I tend to do. And you're going to see it right here. Partey um, just ends up sort of stuffing around with it, finds it to Zinchenko, and then the goalkeeper just literally dives out of the field of play. Like, I couldn't believe that one. Um, they go and pick up the ball there, smart asses. Um, but it is one all, and I thought it was so undeserved because we're, we were all over Arsenal, to be honest with you. And you're going to see here, like the counter attack, Ramsey's there. I've converted some of these got these guys to where, say, Ramsey started off as a left mid. He's now an out and out cam. Um, Diaby's also moved to a left mid as well. So some of the overalls have gone up, and uh, Diaby ends up scoring a beautiful little goal there on the counter. And uh, we're not going to have to worry too much about the counter these days, uh, or at least in terms of this game, because um, we're absolutely smoking Arsenal. You can see they're, they're attacking. They are attacking. We're just defending really, really well. And then also attacking very well. Watkins just turns them absolutely beautiful. The England striker uh, just scored a goal against Australia um, recently. He goes and scores another goal for us against Arsenal. You can see they're diving in on Diaby. You don't want to give him space, especially with the pace that he's got. And then we just do a simple... Um, Back and forth there, just a, just a, a quick little pass there with Diaby. He runs through on goal, and we bang it home. So it is 4-1. We are well and truly smacking Arsenal. And I want to say Arsenal is a very, very good side. So um, 
it was I don't want to say it was surprising, but this is the first time I've actually put a little bit of a score on a side who actually has some quality. And Zeni Olo off the bench goes in and scores. Uh, this time I think he's actually got a bet on us rather than against us. So we end up uh, scoring a goal. Zeni Olo see uh, goal to Diaby. He got two. I'm um, actually subbed him off. He had it queued up. Could have got a hat trick, but we end up winning 5 1 against Arsenal. So, right now, you're seeing the team lineups, and at the moment, it probably means absolutely nothing to you, but I am stuffing around with the lineups. And the reason I'm showing you this, and it will sort of be explained as we see uh, see the game, but this is a game against Legia. I still don't know where they're from. Um, it is snowing as well, which is one of the first times I've seen it, but you'll see something funny later on in the video. But we do have early chance there to Bailey. Squares it up, up to Bodu, who ends up scoring. A very easy goal, opening the scoring with a very heavily rotated squad. And if you can see the bench, and I will show it at one point, but we have guys who are literally in the 40s, a lot of our youth squad players that are promoted to the um, side. But they go and equalize there. And when it happened, I was so shocked. Not only that they took a shot, because it's just I'm not used to a shot being taken from there. But in hindsight, it makes perfect sense. The keeper was nowhere to be seen. He's dived, it's been deflected, and then all of a sudden they've literally kicked it into an open goal, and they go ahead 2-1. And at this point, like when I scored the first goal, I was thinking, you beauty, we're going to absolutely smoke them. doesn't matter, we beat teams like Arsenal. How are we going to lose to a side like this? Even if it is a little bit of a rotated squad. Um, but Legia, they just kept coming at us. I was making bad moves, like calling out the keeper, and then all of a sudden went down 3-1, and I thought absolutely nothing of it. Um, I've literally fielded a super rotated squad. You can see here, Cherky plays through the Matson, one of our new signings. Although he's not really new now, but he's someone who I have converted uh, from left back to right back. But you can see we're creating chances, but just not really doing anything with it. There's a lot of getting in and behind, and you know, a lot of bad uh, shots. Somerville was one of them. Like, if I had showed you all the highlights, we would probably have more shots than them. It's just a matter of we couldn't finish them. A lot of shots off target. And you see a chance like this. Bernard is one of the youth players I was talking about. We're down 4-1. We're throwing goal. You think, you beauty, we're going to score this one. Like, at this point in the game, I'll be completely honest with you. I thought we were going to come back. And that's what I was talking about. This is the funny moment. It goes from snowing. I uh, just... Coming down like crazy. Then next minute, it's just stopped and it's it's perfect conditions again. But Bernard, the man we brought on, he's like 59 rated, something like that. If that, I think it could be even less. Um, he comes on, he doesn't finish it, but we do end up scoring a goal. But then Legia go and score again. So we end up losing this one and uh, he ends up picking up a hat trick. Three goals off five attempts. Great performance from him. But at this point, I was thinking nothing of it. I thought, doesn't matter, don't really care. Rotate the squad, and then I went and found out that we didn't actually make it through the group stages. So that's us out of Europe, which is, you know, not great in terms of the board, in terms of, you know, all that sort of stuff. But in terms of me playing the competitions, I'm happy. Like, we don't really have a lot of squad depth, so I don't really mind that. So a disappointing result, however, it was a heavily rotated squad, and the reason being was that we had some tough games in the Premier League. And I don't want to say this is a tough one, but... Like, the Premier League is the priority. Like, if I get a top four, which is what, what the board wants, that definitely outweighs me having a little bit of a run in the Conference League. And I know we could have won and all that sort of stuff, but it's not super important. But just the one little highlight there, and that's something that I'm not sure if I'm going to do going forward is play a heaps of highlighter games because there just really isn't that many chances. But Makoko goes and scores the one little chance we had. So a nice little win over Brentford. Now we move into the last game of the episode. It's again another uh, Premier League game and we are absolutely flying in the Premier League. We find ourselves just outside of the top four at this point. And uh, like I said, I know like the Europe comp, it wasn't great, but we weren't really focusing on it. In fact, like I hadn't really paid attention whether like where we were in terms of the actual uh, in terms of the actual ladder. So that kind of showed my focus on it. But Premier League, I'm definitely aware. Find myself in fifth. And once again, I don't know if this is just a thing because uh, I'm playing on PS4, where it's just like, it just glitches out completely. But a chance here for Sheffield in the 89th minute, I thought for sure we're about to concede there and lose that one. And I was like, I can't believe I just used the highlights and we just lost that one. But it is a new old drop, um, which is something that hasn't happened like as of late a lot. But we do have some important fixtures coming up. We have some games games like Man United, which is going to be the next one for next episode. But in terms of this episode, we're going to end things here. Now, hopefully you did enjoy that one. If you did, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Let me know that you're enjoying this content because it's not something that I do normally. Normally, I'm very Rebel League based. So 
Go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff, especially on the new channel, Mr. Luke FIFA. Also, go ahead and chuck me a follow on social media. Seeing it on the screen right now, it's Miss Luke on YT for literally everything. Go ahead, give me a follow, give me an ad. Also, shout out to all of the members. Thank you so much for sticking by me, especially with me uploading new content. And, you know, I was sick for quite a while. And also the Super Chatters as well for supporting me in the streams. Haven't been streaming that much, but uh, I look to get back to doing some more streams. But thank you to everybody who has stuck by me and have uh, contributed to the channel financially and also to support me in general. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, Stay tuned for more content, especially this Aston Villa crew mode. And uh, look, I'll see you in the next one. See you.